This video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. What happens when you take a jet aircraft and flip its wings forward? You've all probably heard about the Su-47 and maybe a few of you flew it in Ace Combat. But you know that this wing design dates all the way back to World War II and the Nazis? But it would take till the 1980s when the good old US of A was the first to build a supersonic jet with forward swept wings. A state of the art aircraft to conquer the skies and dominate the Soviet Air Force and all of that 10 years prior to the Soviet attempt of its own design. Yes, we're talking about the real OG. Let's explore together the ingenuity behind this forward swept wing design, how Grumman tried to tame this beast and why they ultimately failed. Hey gang, we've now got 700,000 subscribers on Found and Explained, but I would really love to get that to a million. So if you're not already subscribed, hit that little button and get us to our goal. As I said only a few seconds ago on this YouTube video, forward swiping design dates all the way back to World War II. Contrary to the popular belief that the Nazis came up with it, it was actually the Soviets that made the first official forward swept wing aircraft, called the DBLK. This weird twin fuselage aircraft was tested back in 1940, and although it was a promising design, a bit with some issues, the project was cancelled for being too extravagant for the era. Around the same time, on the other side of the front lines, a German engineer called Hans Walker was playing with the idea of a forward swept wing. And as Nazi Germany pushed for the development of the jet engine, Walker saw the wing design as an easy way to overcome the issues of the early jets and to build a perfect high payload bomber for the Reich. And boy, this thing was an absolute beast. But no spoilers because I've already done a whole video on this aircraft on the channel that you can watch right after this one. So what exactly is the catch with this wing design? Why is it so good? And what led to the downfall of the idea? Now this next piece of news is an absolute game changer. If you want to make videos like me but you don't know where to start, then you need to use NVIDIA AI's new Game Changer Update version 3. It's launching soon and blows every other video tool out of the water, including those other AI video apps like Runway, Pika and even Sora, which I'll remind you hasn't even released yet. That's right, NVIDIA AI version 3 is here, complete and ready to be used by you to make anything you want, and I do mean anything, because now it has the generative capability to make any idea come to life with simple text prompts. You just get to be the director and let your imagination take over. One example I love is how you can make the TV show Breaking Bad with Lego characters, and it just does it flawlessly. Yo, Mr. White, this is totally plastic. And unlike other tools that just make a small clip that you have to somehow figure out how to use online, in Video AI version 3 does the whole video, script and voiceover, and just gives you a completed video. So if you want to make changes as well, like using your own voice, it's done with the click of a button. Seriously guys, it's never been that easy to bring your imagination to life, and if you haven't checked out NVIDIA AI's current version already, go check it out right now for free with pay plans starting for just $20 a month. And if you use my code, you get two times the number of video creation minutes in the first month. Damn, that's pretty damn good. Let's talk about some basics. The main issue of early jets was creating enough lift in low subsonic speeds. Classic swept wings were very good at high speeds, but at a lower airspeed, namely during landing and takeoff, they could not generate enough lift. And this was one of the main problems that plagued the world's first jet fighter, the Mi-262. So Walkie came up with this idea that what if we inverted the wings? This design pushed the center of gravity of the aircraft forward and allows for greater payload capacity, all while generating more lift at low airspeeds and to top it off, allows for better maneuverability, particularly if you get into a dogfight. You see, another issue with the swept wings is limited maneuverability at high speeds. This is because the air moves from the root of the wing towards the tip of the wing due to the spanwise flow, and thus stall originates at the tip of the wing where the ailerons are located. 
So to put that all simply, the higher the swept angle, the better the maximum speed. However, maneuverability suffers because using ailerons becomes harder and harder, and they're the ones responsible for roll in flight. So forward swept wings reverses the situation. So now you have a spanwise flow pushing the air from the tip towards the root of the wing, and your ailerons are free to go wild. Sounds good, doesn't work. So what's the big catch? Every wing needs to be sturdy enough to counter bending and twisting in flight. You've probably seen videos where the airliner wing starts dancing during takeoff. Well, that's the bending due to increased lift. And aircraft wings, of course, are tested thoroughly to prevent cracks under this extreme stress. But there is also another movement, twisting. The main issue of forward swept wings is that the wing tips not only bend, but also twist due to the increased lift, inducing extreme stress on the wing material, which could lead to structural failure. Oh no. And this is where the X-29 comes in. Because as you see, the best materials that the Nazis had available during World War II was aluminium. But flash forward a few more decades, and there was a new hot material that people couldn't get enough of. And that was carbon fiber. After losing the lightweight fighter program to General Dynamics, Grubham decided to explore new technology and create a better fighter for the future. They secured funding from DARPA and NASA to build a new testbed for experimental technologies for the future, namely the forward swept wing design. This aircraft, called the X-29, was sort of a Frankenstein. Both prototypes used front fuselages of two F-5 airframes, along with control service actuators and the main landing gear from the F-16. The engine power of the aircraft was a General Electric F-404, which would be used on the F-A-18 down the line. And this is where the engineers started to get rather clever. They designed the X-29 to be a three-surface aircraft, meaning that apart from the forward swept wings, canards were also featured in the front fuselage, namely for pitch control, and aft strakes, again for helping pitch control. This sounds like overkill, but give me a second, I'll explain. And let's talk about that carbon fiber. The wings were made mostly out of composite materials, and if you take a look at the photo of the jet before the paint job, we can clearly see the box made out of composites in layers to sustain bending and that twisting in flight. Another amazing thing with the X-29 was that it was also an extremely unstable aircraft, meaning it also needed fly-by-wire controls to fly, another thing that the Nazis never had. And this is another technology that was being implemented at the time, with the F-16 being the first fighter in the US Air Force to employ fly-by-wire controls. In the case of the X-29, there was not just one, but three computers doing up to 40 calculations per second and making corrections to keep the plane in flight. That's why it had those three control surfaces. On the flip side, the instability in flight also meant higher maneuverability. So by implementing this fly-by-wire with aerodynamic unstable jet, the X-29 was bound for greatness. Another novelty of this aircraft was testing a supercritical airfoil, which reduced drag at transonic speeds where most of the air combat might occur. So on paper, this aircraft is absolutely ridiculous and incredible, but obviously building it is not that easy, and this is where all the problems started to creep in. During flight testing, pilots reported issues with pitch control. Remember those three surfaces that they had? The plane was performing great in a roll because of its instability, but pitch it at 45 degrees or higher angle of attack, it became much less controllable, and the second prototype even had an emergency parachute to save the jet if anything went wrong. The testing process also showed that those projected decreases in drag was not as great as expected, and even though this was the first forward swept wing aircraft to fly supersonic, the issue of the wing twisting at a high speed, something that even the Germans had massive problems with during World War II, persisted. Namely, this problem would be one of the main reasons why the Russians themselves would give up on the same design a decade later even though they found plenty of solutions for the other issues with this design. 
and it all comes down to those angles of attack. Aerodynamic buffeting occurred at certain angles of attack due to the different airflows colliding, and this meant that the whole fuselage would start shaking and that flight control could even be lost. Well, what you've got to understand is that this jet was never actually made to be a future fighter, nor was it proposed as a bid to a government program. This was purely an experimental aircraft, and the research was performed to give valuable data to both NASA and the US Air Force in future development of this type of aircraft and spacecraft. The X-29 prototypes performed a total of 422 test flights from 1984 up to 1992, and then it went into retirement. The testing phase itself was split into three phases. Phase 1 was testing the basic parameters of both forward swept wings and the supercritical airfoil in flight. Phase 2 was flown by the second prototype and consisted of testing high alpha maneuvers and maneuverability in general. And Phase 3 tested the vortex flow control. The second prototype was fitted with two high pressure nitrogen tanks with small nozzles that injected air into the vortices during high alpha maneuvers. Uh, the point of all these tests was to control when a normal flight controls fail during sharp maneuvers in an attempt to fix those shaking problems. But in parallel to all these events, the Soviets started in 1988 to develop their own technology demonstrator with forward swept wings. First under the designation of S-32 and then later S-37 and then finally the Su-47 Berkut. And we have a whole video about it on its channel. And this aircraft was actually designed to be a military plane. So go check that out. Our hero of the story, however, the X-29, certainly remains one of the craziest concepts of the Cold War, and an interesting design that tested and made possible some critical components of modern jets. It remains as a testament to the ingenuity of the engineers working on the project, and the balls of the test pilots flying it, especially when it came to losing control in flight to see how they could recover it. The surviving aircraft are located today in the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Ohio and the Neil Armstrong Flight Research Center at the Edwards Air Force Base in California. So if you have the chance, be sure to go and see them in person and tell them that Nick from Found and Explain said hi. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to check out the other forward swept wings on my channel. And do let me know if you want to see all about the Soviet DBLK as well and have a great day and don't forget to subscribe to reach that million milestone. Thanks for watching.